The graduate students in the class uh, will be responsible for some material related to what we'll call general hypothesis testing. And this material is really above and beyond uh, what we might call normal hypothesis testing. And the difference really is that uh, in Unit 6A, where we covered the mostly normal uh, hypothesis testing, we were working with normal populations and testing things about the mean of that population. Or maybe we're working with other populations that are not normal, but if we test the mean and we have a large enough sample size, the central limit theorem will allow us to use a normal test statistic. So basically, um, if we're dealing with a test statistic that has a normal distribution, for example, a standard normal, then testing is relatively easy. But we might be working with other cases where we're not testing something about a mean, we don't have nice normal distributions, the central limit theorem doesn't kick in, and we might ask, well, how can we derive good tests in these cases? And good has a very specific meaning in this context. It will really mean for a class of tests of size alpha about a particular parameter, say theta, which test is best? And by best, we mean which test has the highest power or equivalently the lowest type two error. So we might say our journey through hypothesis testing has been pretty restrictive and our goal now is to generalize. So we might generalize by um, thinking about not just a mean or a proportion, but a general parameter theta. And if we think about capital theta as being the parameter space, then we can um, test, we can state our hypotheses a bit more generally. So we might say something like our null hypothesis is that theta is in some set, say capital theta naught, where capital theta naught is a subset of the entire parameter space. And it's just defined as, you know, the values under the null hypothesis. And then the alternative is that theta is in, well, the entire parameter space outside of capital theta naught. So this is really the complement of theta naught. And of course, this complement of theta naught is still uh, still a subset of the entire parameter space. So in our work on testing claims about means, we saw things like a null set where mu is, say, equal to zero, and an alternative that mu is greater than zero. And in this case, it might be a little bit awkward to call the parameter space here capital theta since the parameter is mu, but we'll do it anyway, would be uh, the entire parameter space would be uh, inclusive of zero and up to infinity. And our, um, you know, capital theta naught is just the value zero. So then, of course, uh, capital theta you could say minus capital theta naught is just equal to the interval open zero to infinity. So hopefully you see how you can translate these general hypotheses into situations that we worked with before, but of course this is more general. It allows for uh, encoding more complicated hypotheses. So when we talk about defining a test, what we're really saying is that we are uh, defining a critical region for that test, and we are almost always limiting ourselves to a test of a particular size. So remember size, we denote alpha, it's also known as the significance level, and it's the probability of type 1 error. So we generally work with the class of tests of size alpha, and then when we define the test of size alpha, we pick the right critical region. So for example, maybe you have a sample x1 through xn, Typically, it's a random sample for us. And we might have a null hypothesis 
that says uh, theta, the parameter of interest, is equal to some particular value. And the alternative here I haven't specified, but maybe it's a two-sided alternative, not equal to, maybe it's greater than, maybe it's less than. Um, in this case, the, we might have a test statistic that is the sum of the xi's. And if we say, well, this test statistic being greater than some constant c, that there could be um, a rejection region. So the rejection region or the critical region would be a set C and it's the set of all X, so the set of the data, so this is a data vector, such that if we summed up the data and we got something greater than C. So you could imagine resampling, taking many, many samples from the population and for each one of those samples summing up the data, sometimes you'll have a sum that's greater than C, other times you'll have a sum that's less than or equal to C, and in the former case, when it's greater than C, you would reject, and in the latter case, when the sum is less than or equal to, you would fail to reject the null. So we would reject the null hypothesis if our data that we actually collected was in C. So just some notation, we let C be the rejection region for our test of a particular null hypothesis. And we said the significance level uh, or size of a test is defined as alpha being equal to, well, it's the max value for theta in the part of the parameter space that defines the null hypothesis. So it's the max over, over that space of the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. So that's the size of a test uh, that we defined in er, earlier in this unit. Now the power function uh, we did not define. We define the power, but the power function, which is sometimes denoted and will denote it as uh, gamma c of theta, uh, this is the power function uh, using a critical region or rejection region c. And so we would define this function, gamma c of theta, as the probability that we reject the null hypothesis when the alternative is true. So when theta is within the alternative space. So in our lesson on power, we saw that calculating power means to calculate the probability that you reject the null when some alternative is true and you'd have to fix an alternative. Here we're saying that this is actually a function, and it's a function of theta, where theta will range typically somewhere within the alternative. And it's for a fixed critical region C. Now sometimes we'll actually compute the power function for theta values in the null. Uh, there's no reason why you couldn't do that, and sometimes it's nice to do that, but often what we mean by power is computing it for thetas in the alternative. All right, so hopefully that gives us a bit of context for general hypothesis testing. And in the next video, we'll start our work on trying to find a best test.